All right, so in this video, I'm going to be talking about the time Tim Dillon insulted SNL and more specifically this sketch they did about Joe Rogan and one of the Weekend Update guys, Michael Che, who is also a head writer for the show, got offended by what Tim had to say and he vented his frustration on Instagram and then him and Tim started going at it. So this was around two years ago and I think even before this, Tim had already been very critical of SNL and then they did this sketch where Pete Davidson was impersonating Joe Rogan and by impersonation I mean he put on a bald cap, said he was Joe Rogan and then talked about doing ayahuasca and taking horse dewormer. So it was like the most cliche Joe Rogan material you could think of. Like even for SNL standards, this was pretty bad. It's like they're trying to make it bad. I think maybe they thought, you know, we're going to do a sketch about Joe Rogan, but we're not even going to give him the respect of doing a funny sketch about him and doing a good impersonation. Like that's how little we care about him. I used to host Fear Factor and now doctors fear me. Can you help me, Joe? Oh, sure thing, Big Bird. You see, I took Carlos Mencia down. I could take COVID. Here's some zinc, and ayahuasca, and some horse medicine. Sam. I'm a human, and I took horse medicine. <laughs> and I'm speaking of things that uh, are horse-like. Uh, today's two sponsors are the letters S and D, as in I can S my own D. So hopefully they're just purposely trying to make a terrible sketch and piss off Joe Rogan fans or something. Like, that's the only explanation I have here, you know, because they also did post this to Twitter, and obviously pretty much all the comments are goofing on them and talking about how bad this is. And it kind of went viral because of how bad it is, especially when Tim Dillon quote tweeted it and said, there are a hundred ways to do this sketch and have it be funny. The show's now just lazy, mediocre hacks. And that tweet has 43,000 likes, so it got a lot of attention and Tim continued on and said people saying SNL hasn't been funny since the 70s are wrong Farley, Rock, Sandler, Myers, Norm, Sherry O'Terry, and Molly Shannon were brilliant. Tracy Morgan, also the Hater McKinnon era, was funny. It's also maybe the singular greatest U.S. comedy platform, but this sketch was bad. And not bad because it made fun of Joe or Ivermectin, but it did it in the laziest way possible. It was talking points and not jokes. Comedy shows can have a point of view, mine does, but it should also occasionally have comedy. So since his tweets got a lot of attention, Michael Che, you know, the Weekend Update guy and one of the writers, ended up responding to it on Instagram. But before I get into that, I want to talk about today's sponsor, Factor 75. With Factor, you can get fresh, never frozen, gourmet meals sent right to your doorstep every week. And they're ready in only two minutes, so you can save a ton of time by reducing trips to the grocery store and avoiding any meal prep or cleanup. Like me personally, I'm not good at cooking and I don't like cooking, so to have fresh, high quality meals in my fridge ready to go is perfect. And Factor's meal plans range from four to 18 meals per week, and it's easy to adjust the amount, and you can also skip a week if you need to. And there's a lot to choose from. Their menus are updated weekly, and they include over 27 different meals and over 33 add-ons. And you can choose your favorite meals or you can have factor choose based on your preferences so if you want to get started today make sure you head over to factor75.com or click the link below and use code 2lazy50 to get 50 percent off your first factor box again that's factor75.com use code 2lazy50 and you get 50 percent off your first box all right so back to michael che's response to tim dillon you know he should have just taken a page out of my book and when tim said that sketch was lazy he should have just said he's too lazy to try. I mean, is he really motivated working for SNL? Like, is anybody proud of that sketch that they did? I mean, it's like they're trying to make it bad. And I doubt Michael Che enjoys working there anymore. You know, apparently for the past five seasons, he's been debating on leaving the show. So I think him getting defensive and getting pissed about what Tim had to say is also him just kind of pissed at the situation here. You know, being on SNL, which is supposed to be this big time TV show that everybody dreams of being on, but it is not what it used to be. You know, it used to be able to produce big time stars, but recently, like in the past 10 years, I'd say the biggest name to come out of that show is Pete Davidson, and that's only because of the people he's dated, so that show's kind of just a sinking ship at this point, and it sounds like Michael Che doesn't know whether to go down with the ship or just try to do his own thing, and he's probably just frustrated with the situation, so when Tim put out those tweets, his response on Instagram, first he just posted the tweets, and he said, LOL, you gotta be kidding me, Tim Dillon with a bunch of exclamation points and question marks, 
what's the world come to? And then again, he just posted Tim Dillon with exclamation points and question marks with a bigger font. And then he did it one more time and said, Tim F and Dillon. So I don't know what kind of response this is. You know, you'd think if you were going to address what Tim said, you'd think of something better to say or just don't say anything at all. I mean, just saying Tim Dillon a bunch of times, it's like, all right, what about him? You know, you got to elaborate a little bit. Like he's implying that Tim has no right to talk. But at this point, Tim is a really successful comedian and he has a huge fan base, which I'm sure a lot of them were letting Michael hear it because then he said, look, I don't want no trouble. And then he actually does try to elaborate a little bit and it doesn't really help at all so I guess maybe that was a bad idea but also I just think the way he's going about it is a bad idea like now he posts this message he got from a Tim Dillon fan that says Tim's making $190,000 a month on Patreon and Michael says I don't care if it's a zillion I know Tim and he ain't what you think he is He's a sweet, humble guy who really tried at stand-up, got nowhere, became a media personality because it's much easier, and we're all very happy for him, but don't get fresh, Tim. And then Tim responds to him and says, here's the reality, I sell more tickets than Michael Che ever has. I don't think he's allowed to use his website per his job, and I've built something on my own that he never could. Che has done well for a drunk who can barely read, but his show sucks and he knows it. And then Michael responds to that and says, all fair points, I'm very proud of Tim, I don't want no trouble. So again, this is a weird response. You know, it sounds like he's stuck between bashing Tim and then complimenting him at the same time. It's so weird. And then he's also kind of backtracking. You know, he just keeps saying, I'm proud of him and I don't want any trouble. But then after that, again, he says, what has the world come to? So in my opinion, it sounds like he's saying this because, you know, he just can't believe that he went the whole traditional media route and got a job at SNL, which he probably always dreamed of having. But now at this point, there really aren't many opportunities you can get from it anymore. And this show is just kind of a joke. But now independent comedians like Tim Dillon are taking off and becoming really successful just doing their own stuff. So I think Tim trashing SNL and everybody agreeing with him and people just goofing on SNL all the time is just adding insult to injury at this point for Michael Che. So he just made one more post about it. He said, LOL, the last time I saw Tim Dillon was about three years ago and he was so nice and complimentary. And I told him I was very proud of him and I still am. I'm not gonna say nothing to Tim that I wouldn't tell him in person. He's a sweet guy, ask anybody that knows him. And also I think Michael's saying Tim's a nice guy and he's very complimentary. And with that previous post, him saying that people don't understand who Tim is. I think he might be trying to imply that Tim kind of plays a character on his podcast and he's completely different when he's off air or not posting on social media because I have heard something like that before. You know, Tim Dillon also got in a beef with Anthony Jeselnik and I'm going to make a video about that on Patreon. If you want to hear about it, make sure you check it out. But Anthony said it seems like Tim kind of does a character on his podcast. So I think maybe that's why Michael Che keeps saying Tim's a nice guy and everything. Like that's the only explanation I have because I don't know why he continues to compliment him right after Tim just said basically he's a drunk that can't read. You know, you'd think he'd go back at him with something else, but he's just complimenting him. It's kind of weird. But I think maybe he's just trying to say that Tim's not really a shit talker and he's just trashing SNL to make his fans happy and he knows that's what will get him attention, maybe. I don't know, but people were speculating that Michael Che actually did this for attention because he had a special coming out within the next few days. Like Andrew Schultz, he talked about on his podcast, and he's like, Michael's a smart guy. I don't think this got them at all, and I think he just realized this was a good way to promote his special. I think this, this is Che promoting a special. I, you know what? There's, That's there's a good no point. chance that he gives a fuck. He don't, yeah. he don't care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is Che promoting the special. The special also comes out when? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. We're today, today when this podcast this comes drops. Out. Yeah. yeah, of course. So yeah. Yeah, you're going to engage in a beef. You don't have a podcast. You're not necessarily going out and doing podcasts and all these other platforms. You still have to drum up interest for your special. Right, right, right. right. It's not like throwing a billboard up in fucking Times Square does anything anymore. Yeah, yeah. you got to drum up interest. It's pretty convenient that a day before the special comes out or two days before the special comes out, there's a beef with one of the biggest uh, comedic media personalities. Yeah. And he gave you the alley-oop. Right. I might have texted Dylan. I was like, yo, you gave him every opportunity. Yeah. Because everybody's going to go to his Instagram to look at what the beef is about. And I promise you, there's probably just one picture saying my special comes out the 16th. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I bet you, I, I, didn't, I didn't see what his thing looked like. I guarantee. It is exactly what it is. Okay, of course. <laughs> Bro, I don't know if Chase this much of a mastermind, but part of me thought 
Like he did that shit on purpose. Here's what's interesting. Write a <laughs> shitty Joe sketch, right? You're going to have all the people who fuck with and defend Joe shit on that. The whole internet's going to start talking. They don't have Trump to criticize anymore, right? So you can't go after Trump. You need the new version of that. You need the new divisive guy. The new divisive guy now, CNN is trying to do it, is Joe. Joe. You make the show about Joe, and then you make it, if he's a true mastermind, <laughs> Right. you make it criticizable. Yeah, unfair. You make it yeah. unfair. If it's a super funny pointed like parody, then everyone goes, oh yeah, that was funny. If it's hilarious, yeah. you gotta give it up. It doesn't make any news. If it's not, if it's straight, kind of hacky. Right. Like, trust me, if Che's on stage, that's not the joke he's making about horse dealer. Yeah, so promoting a special probably had something to do with it. But if that's the case, you know, you should have done a better job of going after Tim instead of just calling him a media personality and a nice guy. You should have just said that Tim is trying to defend his meal ticket, Joe Rogan, and he's trying to suck up to his fans to get attention for shitting on SNL. And I know Tim could have just said, well, you're doing the same thing, you know, defending where you work. But still, even with what Michael actually said, Tim can point out the hypocrisy. You know, calling Tim Dillon a media personality while well, you're known for being the weekend update guy at SNL probably isn't the best insult. And also, like Schultz said, I don't think Che was actually proud of that sketch. You know, I don't think he was responding to defend it. I think he's more just in shock of the whole situation. And maybe he's using it to promote his special. Like also Tim Dillon was talking about this afterwards and he said he actually likes Michael Che and never had a problem with him and enjoys some of his work. It What's was, funny about him is I like him. Yeah, me We've too. Met. I, 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 I've, Che I is agree. one of the I, only famous people in the world who will still come and do shows like Legion of Skanks. I, I think Che yeah, is a good dude. I agree and he's with funny. him on a lot of things, right? Like I agree with a lot of what he says. What I think happened was he, that got under his skin. Yeah. what I said. Yeah, so I think with Che's response, he was definitely more just frustrated with his own situation, I'd imagine. Like, also, three or four months before this happened, he kind of got canceled a little bit, and he's probably in some trouble with SNL because he posted a joke about Simone Biles, and it's almost like he was asking for trouble. You know, maybe he kind of wanted to get fired by SNL in a way because he clearly doesn't enjoy it that much anymore. He's, like, barely hanging on. Like, he was on the Stern Show talking about working for SNL, and Howard brought up how it'd probably be better for him or he'd be able to make more money if he just focused on comedy and didn't do the show anymore. And Michael Che definitely agrees, but then it sounds like he's trying to convince himself that there's still something about working for SNL that he enjoys, which, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he does really like working for the show still, even though I don't think he'd be talking about leaving every season. But to me, it sounds like he's still holding out hope that the show turns around eventually. And also, I, I think even financially, you could probably make more money on the road doing <laughs> comedy. Honestly, it, Saturday Night Live is not infamously known for paying people well. No, it's not. But my fantasy is to work the seller <laughs> every day. So, like, to me, you're not, you don't really think about the money. You think more so about that weapon of being on live television, appointment television, like kind of the last place where you could where something exciting can happen even if it doesn't it's it's the, the possibility is there you know it's nascar right. you know it's something something crazy can happen it's a, it's a championship fight so I, I think that's still intoxicating i think that's why people always come back but you know after a while you just feel like i don't even know if i have anything to offer anymore you know you get a little bit down on yourself and you just want to kind of do something different just to feel like you're a stronger artist yeah so it sounds like he's always going back and forth whether or not he should leave so that's why i think that simone biles joke that he put out is him kind of almost asking to get fired but he ended up just saying his account was hacked and backtracking so once again he has trouble committing to something and he caves in to snl you know i'm sure they told him to say that his account was hacked but if i were him you know i would have just said no i'm gonna stick to it and if you fire me over a joke, then I'm just going to go on Joe Rogan next week, and I'll be fine. If I get fired here, whatever, I'll just go do Joe Rogan next week, and I'll be fine. So I think just like with Shane Gillis, you know, him getting fired from SNL was probably one of the best things that could have happened to him. 
I think Michael Che getting fired probably would only help at this point. You know, it's a lot of publicity. And then you can go on the Joe Rogan experience and talk about how he was canceled for making a joke. So I think Michael Che definitely thinks about going that route and is kind of frustrated with his current situation. And that's what led to him freaking out about Tim Dillon. Because, you know, Tim's career, it's almost helped him. The fact that he didn't have any TV shows or didn't end up working in mainstream media. You and I look at guys like Ari. There's a lot of guys out there that varying levels of success yeah but in my opinion it's true success it's pure success because you guys are legitimately doing what you want to do the way i look at it is listen things shake out the way they shake out i'm i'm lucky enough to not have any of those things i tried to do certain things like i i had a pilot with comedy central i did all these things now looking back i'm lucky none of that worked right i feel lucky i feel lucky that i didn't break in that way so I can kind of do and say what I want for the most part, and I'll be okay. Obviously, we never know when the internet turns and says, you're out. But for the most part, yeah. I'm lucky that uh, that I didn't get a show. Like, had I got my tour bus show on Comedy Central, had that worked, I would have had a different career. I think my career is better now than the career that I would have had. So when Michael Che became the Weekend Update guy at SNL, it was still when traditional media was the way to go. So he was probably thinking, I made it, you know, my career is set, which it is, you know, the guy is a really successful comedian. I'm not trying to take that away from him. And I'm sure he is really happy with his career. But now at this point, you know, working for SNL is not what it used to be. And seeing all these other comedians becoming really successful because they didn't go down that route or they tried and failed or they tried and got fired right away, like Shane Gillis, but now they're in a much better position where they can basically do and say whatever they want. You know, I'm sure Michael Che sees that and is like, what does the world come to? You know, that's how we get those Instagram posts from him. Like, I think this was everything building up and he finally just snapped, but hopefully he figures it out. You know, hopefully he finally just commits and leaves SNL. He might have already. I'm not sure if he's even on there anymore, but it's probably best to just do your own thing at this point. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about it all down in the comments. And then make sure you go check out my Patreon account. There's a ton of exclusive content on there. And like I said, I'm going to be posting a video about the time Tim Dillon got in a beef with Anthony Jeselnik. And I also talked about the time Tim Dillon flipped out at some Airbnb owners. And I just posted a video about how Brendan Schaub accidentally exposed Joe Rogan one time and it was hilarious. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure you go check it out. I'll put a link in the description. And then hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you at the next video.